Mrs. Rowley and I'm a stained glass artist. I've been a stained glass artist for over 40 years uh, and it's something that I have to say I never expected to do. I mean obviously things have changed dramatically over the years and I think fundamentally I am a bit of a frustrated sculptor so making flat windows is a bit of a, <laughs> a I don't know a bit of a, of a disappointment in some ways but I often try and find ways of adding a third dimension to what I make either by creating metal structures to hold the pieces or simply by adding some kind of relief to the surface. I coincidentally got a really lovely commission to make um, a stained glass dome for a place called the Western Baths Club in Glasgow. I think the Bank of Scotland is one of my favourite pieces. I'm very proud of that piece and I loved making it. I had to work with a metal worker um, from Edinburgh and we had a really great working relationship and it was just a fabulous experience. It's a great shame to me that not more people are able to enjoy it because being where it is in a bank it's not unfortunately accessible to the public anymore. Restoration works a real given. You know how long it's going to take you to make it or to unmake it and then remake it. All sorts of different kinds of work go on in the studio. It just depends on what kind of work has come in. And at the moment we're working on restoration work for a building in St Andrews. My assistant Gav is in the process of um, putting a piece of um, lead work back together again having already taken it apart. So what we do when the windows come in, they're usually in fairly poor condition and are falling apart. Uh, the first thing we do is put them on the flat on the bench and then we make a rubbing and if you look on the table you can see this pattern drawn in green lines. This is um, a rubbing of the original window and it's very important for us to have that because that makes sure that we put the whole thing together the right size and in the right order. For the most part we're reusing the original glass but we're um, changing it to be completely new lead and that's what Gav's doing here. He's replacing all the lead. Well, basically, got lead. The lead. Look at the size, just for measuring. Just the eyeball, really. Make it mark. Got your knife. Come on. Any raggy edges? It's good to go. So once the window has been put together, um, we make sure that it's the right size by putting long battens around the four corners so that it's held completely safe. And then we've got to solder it together at all the lead junctions. And these are the bits that do the work in terms of holding the whole piece together as a single unit. We have to solder it one side, turn it over, which is quite a delicate operation, and then solder it on the other side, especially when we're working on panels as big as this. These panels are really quite large panels. Once it's soldered on both sides, it then has to be putted. And you can see that this window looks an awful mess at the moment. And that's because we've worked um, black lead light cement, which is a kind of putty that sets up quite solidly. And we've worked it into all the cracks in between the glass and the lead on both sides of the window. So this has been done on the underside of the window as well as the top side of the window and that's what makes the window weatherproof but it also adds strength to the window because well, as it sets up it gets really solid and um, gives some added vertical strength to the window. You can see how it's beautiful, it's clean, it's looking pretty um, solid. Uh, any broken pieces have now been replaced and what I've got to do now is just finish cleaning away any residue of that black putty. So I'm just going round each pane with a knife, just cutting it back and making sure that each little pane is clean. It's rather a laborious job and it certainly isn't a particularly skilled or enjoyable job, but unfortunately it has to be done. So we just have to do it, put up with it. And you can see that this window has got some really nice elements in it. For instance, these beautiful circular 
um, turquoise pieces, which are really, they're little roundels and they're almost just like little wine glass feet. This kind of glass is very characteristic of um, late Victorian, early Edwardian glass and um, I think these windows were probably put in around the 1890 mark originally. So they've survived quite well given their age. We usually have to replace the leads after about 100 years so they're not doing too bad. Thank you.